the common theme is it was a benefit that they were entitled to that got cut off. It was somebody of authority that came to their door and they told their story and they weren't believed. The first person that you tell that story to should believe them. Immigrants in general have a long journey to the United States that's often riddled with more violence than they were leaving. The journey is long, it's hard, hundreds and thousands of miles to come to the United States. The crossing of the border can be treacherous for the individual and for the family members. To tell that journey of why you want to stay in this country, why you want to have safety and stability, and that shouldn't be questioned. The question really should be is how can we help you? You know, when we came to the border, we crossed the river, so we had like we were wearing we were wearing wet clothes for three days. We were starving and we were like we didn't have beds. It was just an empty room with the AC on, even though we we were wearing wet clothes. A lot of clients that I meet with, even now, have no idea about the public benefits that they are entitled to. Um, they have no idea about the right to shelter and their ability to enter a shelter, and instead they're forced to sleep in parks on, on the street. We connected through the Browns uh, Family Justice Center, and obviously she introduced herself. It was just an amazing experience. She was so nice, and even before meeting her, I had like an idea of what lawyers were, and I was very scared, because I thought they don't, they're not here to help you. And so the power imbalance really is, is that you have to rely on advocates, attorneys, all the time to get sort of relief for life's most basic issues. And that can include, you know, putting food on your table, getting quality education for your child, becoming safe in your own home. I guess it was more like knowledge we didn't know we could got into a shelter. I think it always felt like a, like a privilege, like if you're not, if you don't have any type of identification, it doesn't belong to you. If we invest in our communities, if we provide people the support and the resources that they deserve, we can watch that investment grow and we can see what that can turn into, which is Yaris, a valid Victorian who's going to become an immigration attorney and she's going to give back to her community. It made me feel so confident and like helpful, like, oh, we do have an opportunity here. And I think it completely erased my like my idea of what lawyers do. Like if they want, they can make it happen. And if they are in love with their job and like they love what they do, we can definitely make a change. So I I, I was so excited. <laughs> Sorry. I was just so excited. I feel like and I wanna she's like my role model and I feel like I wanna definitely do what she has done for me and do maybe for other family, for other clients and stuff. You should care about the work that NILAG does because we're New Yorkers, um, because it's your neighbor that might be experiencing this problem. It might be you one day that's experienced this problem. We all sort of rise together, and we go down together, and we really should think of sort of our community as everyone's community where everyone should thrive.